I'm Betty Luckham, and uh, my home country is Guyana. What used to be British Guiana is now the Independent Republic of Guyana. And uh, after holidaying in England, I returned home, corresponded with a young man, and returned in 1959 to get married to Brian Luckham, a Hampshire man. Brian was a student of the London School of Economics, and I enrolled also and did a two-year diploma course in social science. When uh, Brian graduated, he got a job in Manchester involved in adult education, and someone telephoned me to say that the Commission in the United Kingdom for the West Indian Federation was looking for social workers for three cities, one of which was Manchester. So we moved to Manchester and I was employed by the Commission. And this involved walking the streets of Moss Side mainly, knocking on doors and informing them that there are going to be a community meeting at the local church hall on a Sunday. This proved to be quite, a, got a good response. It was when I met Eloise Edwards, for example, when I knocked on her door. And we had these Sunday meetings. But after a year, the funding stopped. But I was so involved, I couldn't give up being involved. And uh, we went from strength to strength. Those meetings led to island organizations, for example, the Jamaica Association, the Trinidad and Tobago Society, and so on. And uh, after some years, these organizations were part of the West Indian Organizations Coordinating Committee, that's WIOCC. I remember particularly Eloise Edwards, and uh, she was one who went on to do a great deal of work in the community. And of course, we eventually, for instance, Louise Dacacodia was another one of the women. And they were busy at that time after uh, a while of being in the WIOCC. And it was being part of WIOCC. We had a speaker from the Jamaica Commission, I think. And he said, it's time for you people to become involved in the economic life of the community. And uh, three of our members went to London to an organization that was recommended. And they came back with the idea of an economic development site. We spent over a year thinking, talking, visiting sites, and trying to find a place that we thought would be suitable. We eventually decided on a certain site. I went to a meeting of the planning department of Manchester City Council and uh, said that we were interested in starting a business and we had identified a site and we would like to know what their views were on this. They approved in principle and said, that sounds like a good idea, but you cannot have the site that you have indicated. So I went to the offices of the three labor politicians, the, um, the labor man, the conservative man, and the liberal councillors. And one of them 
took up our, uh, our concerns. I'll never forget his kindness. He got nine Manchester MPs to sign the application for the particular site we had identified. And as a result, that site was agreed. It was largely due to the footwork of that. And I, I never forget his goodness. The setting up of what came to be known as karaoke enterprises. I remember the meeting, for example, when we were discussing what would this organization be called? Because um, Roy Blackman, who was very active, Louise Dacacodia and Eloise had visited London at a similar site. And they came at the meeting, oh yes, this, that, 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 that. I let them rub it on. <laughs> and then I said, how about the name Karaoke? Karaoke, what's that, what's that? <laughs> I said, write down WIOCC, which was the West Indian Organization's Coordinating Committee. Strike out the W, put C-A-R, and put an A at the end, and you get karaoke. Oh, yes, yes, that's, and that's how karaoke came about. But we had our very difficult times as well, because after about 18 months, there was a fire in one of the units. And that caused a, a great deal of damage, and it meant we had to go back to scratch and demolish that and start building again. So everything that I have been involved in has had to face its particular challenges. And uh, we were very delighted when we were able to get karaoke open, uh, 99 units. This is a karaoke at Ardwick. Uh, but that has proved to be a success. Um, I, ser I served as company secretary for many years while Louise Dakakodi was the chairperson. And after, um, after Louise gave up her chairmanship, I became the chairperson of Karaoke Enterprises. This was really launching a bit further into community to provide economic activity because these units at Karaoke Enterprise were for business people. And because of the size of the units and the way the sizes ranged, it meant that uh, an individual businessman could afford to rent the accommodation. It was a very important contribution to the economic life of the community because if you have uh, an enterprise like that, it means you can have different sized units and it could provide for a starter or it could provide for an already established business looking for good quarters. And Louise Dacacodia and Eloise Edwards they were very active in their communities in a number of different roles. And I was fortunate to be able to be around and to be relating to the other initiatives that they were involved in. And we were together at Carioca when Louise was chairperson for many years and then as she stepped down, I was appointed, while I was company secretary when she was chairperson. And when she stepped down um, as chairperson, I became chairperson of Karaoke Enterprises. So that worked well. The fact that, because sometimes strong personalities can sort of clash and not necessarily get on well together. But I felt that we were in a threesome, a very important threesome, three strong black women, and that we were able to work together and cooperate. 
I, there's always disagreements within uh, small groups, you know, thinking about how you prioritize, what is more important, what you should do first, and so on. But we were able to overcome those uh, challenges, and uh, we worked together very well, I think, to great effect. There was a serious challenge because my daughter, I only have one daughter, and she had um, a very serious illness, had to be hospitalized for a long time. Thank God she has got over that. Um, also, we were connected with the Hampshire family. My husband's brother, Bernard, he um, also had his own challenges. And uh, we kept in touch. We were close family, I would say. Uh, uh, most people are very warm and welcoming. And we have annual concerts when we present a program. And uh, I feel very happy within that group. Without a doubt, there are people who frown and think, well, what's she doing here? But I think that if, as an individual, you are confident in yourself and uh, you feel that uh, what you're doing is what life challenges present, that you can overcome, overcome and not let personal objections put you off. You just have to look beyond these things and to um, get strength from those who show you friendship and support. Well, it's a question of what encouragement and support can we give to those who want to contribute. And sometimes it's not always obvious. Um, you have to talk to people. And the fact that there are people, some people from the black community who are confident, who have achieved, and uh, are prepared to stand up and give an opinion, it means that example is very, very important for especially for the young people coming out of school into the large world, which has difficulties that have to be overcome. I think the world is, I wouldn't say a different place to when I was a younger woman, um, but there are a number of different factors at play. And the way that the challenges, for example, that young people face, uh, I think those challenges can sometimes lead them into dangerous situations. And they do need to have the wisdom and the encouragement of the older generation, which helps to keep them going.